A very warm welcome to all the esteemed dignitaries, our leadership team, guests, and our very dear Newtons. I request the Honorable Chief Guest, Prof. Dinesh Singh, Mr. Rajendra Singh Pawar, Founder, NIIT University, Mr. Vijay Thadani, Co-Founder, NIIT University, and Prof. Parimal Manke, President, NIIT University, to grace the dais. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm good morning to all of you. I'm Neha Tiwari, and on behalf of NIIT University, it is my privilege to welcome you all to the 13th Convocation Ceremony. Today, we gather here to celebrate the culmination of years of hard work, dedication, and determination. It is a momentous occasion as we witness the transition of our graduating students from novices to professionals in their respective field. As said by Albert Einstein, and I quote, education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school, unquote. You probably don't remember all the grammar rules from your English teacher or algebra equations from your math professor, but you will carry the way of thinking they taught you all throughout your life. One of the goals of education is to create possibilities for men and women to invent and discover and for them to be capable of doing new things. Indeed, this is emphasized in the vision of NIT University, which is to be a visionary in learning, research, innovation and sustainability. We take immense pride in our students' success and it is gratifying to bestow them with the degree of honors. To all graduates, I offer my warmest congratulations on your academic success, the culmination of many years of dedication and hard work. To begin the ceremony, let us pay tribute to Ma Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge. I request the dignitaries on the dais to light the lamp. Ma Saraswati Sharde Thank you, music team, for such a melodious rendition. 
I have the honor of inviting Mr. Rajendra Singh Pawar, founder of NIIT University, to deliver the welcome address. Professor Dinesh Singh and friends, it's a great moment for, particularly for all the young people, ladies and gentlemen who spent a number of years here. And uh, I should start by welcoming you as you're going out today. Strange as it may sound. Because you've been at your industry practice, you've come here to be with us on this day. So we missed you for these few months, but delighted to have you here as we bid you farewell. So welcome. But welcome, I want to give a welcome back welcome to Professor Dinesh Singh, who's been here on, on at least three occasions that I can remember. <clears throat> he came once to attend Dr. Karan Singh's lecture, the annual lecture. And then he came twice again, and Vijay, of course, will introduce him in more detail. But he is um, no stranger. In fact, he's one of the people who helped us think through the idea, in a sense, a founding professor, as we titled him, and a few others at that time who helped us think about the university. So he's not new to the place, but I welcome him back to the campus today. And at that time, when we were conceptualizing the university, uh, he was the director of the South Campus of Delhi University. We got many occasions to meet him. I, have, of course, admired his many of his qualities, but the fact that he's a brilliant mathematician. But more than that, I think he's a very, very committed academic, an excellent human being with a very, very clear mind. And those interactions are still very fresh in my mind. And therefore, when we were thinking about the university, he... He was one of the people who was a go-to person. So, welcome, uh, Professor Singh. He also is perhaps one of the more entrepreneurial academic administrators that I've seen. Um, as the Vice Chancellor of Delhi University created quite a quite a storm, if I may use the word, by he was reminding us this morning that he visited some very famous universities in the morning, uh, colleges in the morning, only to discover that nothing was really going on there. And he said, it took me a few months to get things started. <clears throat> but that was just the initiation. But after that, he attempted well before time, the four-year program, some of you recall, which went into a lot of pushes and pulls. And it's interesting that those principles come back embedded in the NEP. And not only that, I was in Jammu University recently. They've already started the Design Your Degree program as a four-year program for youngsters. Students have been there for four months and I could see the difference. So a very large number of innovations done. So he shares the, the innovative zeal that all of us and all of you, I presume by now, share with all of us. So we welcome that aspect of yours, uh, Professor. Singh. And um, <clears throat> as I welcome you and welcome all of the parents as well, who, who, as Vijay continues to say, took a risk with us and hopefully are here to see the outcome. I just want to touch and remind us on a couple of things which we always try and remember on this important day every year, which is the commitment to a set of core principles which we as a university built as the DNA. So I, I'll not relate all the four core principles. I want to touch on two of them, in which there's been some more interesting work in the year. I try and recount that every year, the movement during the year. So one of them is the linkage with industry. And by industry, we don't mean the, the industry manufacturing. We mean, we, need, we mean your next step. It could be your connect in the world of work, whether you go into government or you go into academia or you go for your next degree. But of course, a large number of you go into industry. So industry linkage has been one of the core principles. I'll touch on that briefly on one or two new ideas. And the second is, is the one which I consider perhaps the most foundational one, which is seamless, seamlessness. And with climate change, bringing out the divide between man and nature, 
this becomes even more important. So I'll touch on a few points on that. So on industry linkage, uh, Professor Singh, these students have done their time in industry and we keep saying that you have to be day one ready when you join work, but these people are ready for many months now. And so the industry practice idea helps them to get ready for work, to internalize that as part of education. And uh, in spite of the tough time of the last few years with the global economy being what it is, I think all of you have done exceptionally well and you carried the, the flag of NU in your companies very well and every one of you managed to do this successfully. And now the big step we initiated eight years ago, but it's beginning to take fruition, is that in the academic process, right from first year, how do we connect students to the world of work? And we've been developing the idea, which internally we call it as the additive curriculum, where a large batch of students across the years funnel through the people who are doing their industry practice or connected with industry, pick up problems, which are distributed to a group of a couple of hundred students across the years, depending on which courses they are doing, to try and find a way to solve the problem. So right from first year, students start getting an opportunity to see what the second, third, fourth year students are doing. They get a visibility into the process. I think that methodology is getting more and more traction. And in our view, that will be perhaps a new pedagogy for, for the undergrad education anywhere in the world. And we, we are we held it next year, which is our 15th year. We want to announce it. And we think it will be as profound for, for the undergrad education as perhaps the case study method was for Harvard. So we think it's something as important. And that will be really a, a feather on the cap of our industry linkage core principle. Uh, on, on, in seamlessness, I think there are many, many, many dimensions. I will touch on the environment, which has become flat in our face when you're looking at climate change. And I was speaking to General A.K. Singh, who's the, who carries the responsibility while our faculty carries the resp responsibility in the academic front. He carries the responsibility on a sense of place, a way of living, living the, with the environment. And I was with him up in the hill in the morning where we are looking at uh, uh, another interesting project, which is we came here, we started planting trees. We planted last year itself over 2,500. So it's gone over a lakh this year of trees planted. But more interesting is that in the earlier years, we were, we were putting trees we thought looked good. And over the years, particularly in the last couple of years, we started looking at the appropriateness of the trees we plant. And we've involved... Uh, the tree man of India, as he's called, uh, Pradeep Krishan, to work on a project which is trying to look at indigenous shrubs, plants, bushes, and trees, which in his definition basically means that it, if it has one monsoon, then you don't need to water it because otherwise you're watering trees for two to three years. So I went to see that there's a, there's a patch of five acres of land where one side is a hillock, which is the rock structure, and this side is a sand structure and you're planting and trying out new trees. A few hundred trees have been planted and uh, and that we initiated. So we had, I had a chance to look around and see how that's going. Because the more indigenous we get with our plantation, the more sustainable they are and they build their own ecosystem. And um, we've had to build a nursery because you can't find them so easily. And the nursery has become quite big now. And this is the first, the second nursery. The first one we had to build for the native big plant called the Jal Pilu, which is the olive family, uh, which lasts for hundreds of years. So we couldn't find a nursery of Jal Pilu anywhere in Rajasthan. So we made one. So now we planted a lot of them. So I think on the, on the front of ecology, we are doing well with water. Uh, again, Jen Leke was sharing with me that the water table has fallen in, in Nimrana like it is everywhere. And our drop is significantly lower than drop because every drop of water we're trying to save and conserve. And of course, all the output that goes out goes up into the hill as, as into tanks. And then there's drip irrigation going uphill in a sense. 
So on that environment front, I think there's a lot of steady improvement. Now we have to rework the terminology and talk of net zero. How do we become net zero well before anyone else? And, uh, and it's important because the students are involved in this activity. They plant their trees, they see the trees growing up. They walk into the jungle, they see how the bird nests are being formed. I don't know whether all of you did that when you came back this time, but before you go, please do revisit your tree and maybe plant another one. Because environment cannot be taught in a classroom. Net zero cannot be ta taught in a classroom. But we think that this thousand acres we have behind ourselves, behind our hundred acres is our classroom, is a lab, and that is flourishing. So these two core principles, I just wanted to update everybody. And of course, as I talk about that and as I close, I do want to mention that we, we, had, a, we had a big loss this year. Uh, Air Commodore Kamal, who built this campus, who started the Green Movement, we lost him in May, 20th May. Very, very unexpectedly and a very rapid, short period in which his disease consumed him. And of course, we've, we've remembered him very often, but I did want to make a point that much of what we talk as, of as a Green Movement, uh, the credit goes to one individual, that's Kamal, and I did want all of us to remember him as well as we go through this important day. Welcome once again, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I now request our Honorable President, Prof. Parimal Manke, to declare the convocation open. I declare the convocation open. Thank you, ma'am. May I request all the recipients of the degree of Bachelor of Technology to rise from their seats. I request Prof. Devashish Sen Gupta to present the candidates for the award of the degree of Bachelor of Technology. Madam, I have the honor to present to you the candidates, 60 who are present and 90 in absentia, to whom I know to be suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of Bachelor of Technology and pray that they may be awarded the degree of Bachelor of Technology. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Act as the Chairman of the Academic Council of NIT University, <clears throat> and in recognition of your being suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of Bachelor of Technology, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Technology and require you that in thought, word and action, you prove yourself worthy of it. Giant. Kanvilkar. <laughs> Ananna Mittal. I am Naik. <laughs> Ayush Kumar Mahato. Abhimunnu Kumar. <laughs> Aditya Chaudhuri. Thank you. 
आगम गोयल अंतर्लीना पॉल अनुराग पोरेल आरुषि मित्तल आर्यन धवन आर्यन राज शॉ अश्विन यादव अभी अप्रतिम सिन्हा आयुष पांडे बडेला श्री यशस्वी चिराग चावला दीपक दीक्षा दत्त दिभांशी यादव दृष्टि बहल जी सालम सस्मित्रा श्रेयन
ಘನುಕುಂತಲ ಹರಿಚಂದನ ಹರ್ಷ್ ಪಾಂಡೆ ಹಿಮಾಂಶು ವಾದವ ಇಶಿಕಾ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಜತಿನ್ ಶರ್ಮಾ ಕಾಪುಗಂತಿ ಸಾಕೆತ್ ಕರುಣೇಶ್ ರಾಜೇಶ್ ಬಾಮನ್ ಜೋಗಿ ಕೌಶಿಶ್ ಮಲ್ಹೋತ್ರ ಕೇರವ್ ನಹಾರ್ ಕಿಂಜಲ್ ಪರಾತೆ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಆದಿತ್ಯ ಜೈನ್ ಕುಶಾಗ್ರ ಮಿಶ್ರ ಲಾಶ್ರೀ ತಾಲೂರು ಲಕ್ಷ ಜೋಶಿ ಮಾಧವ್ ಮೆಹ್ತಾ ಮಹಕ್ ಫಹೀಂ ಮನ್ಕರಣ್ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಭಟಿಯಾ ಮ 
Minakshi S. Reddy. Mahek Lunkar. Mohammad Ibrahim. Mohit Jain. <laughs> Nilanjan Mahato. Prab Simran Singh Sethi. <laughs> Prab Saran Singh. Raghav Dunga. Rahul Grover. Jamek Jain Shartak Malik Selina Goel. <laughs> Shoham Paul. Tanvi Narkete <laughs> Tulika Arun. Tushar Malhatra Uday Shom Vasu Shohi (laughs) 
विशाल शाहू व्रज पैटल श मेहरा थैंक यू मैम मे आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द रिसिपियंट ऑफ द डिग्री ऑफ मास्टर ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इन साइबर सिक्योरिटी टू राइज फ्रॉम देयर सीट्स आई रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर देवशीष सेन गुप्ता टू प्रेजेंट द कैंडिडेट फॉर द अवार्ड ऑफ द डिग्री ऑफ मास्टर ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इन साइबर सिक्योरिटी मैडम आई हैव द ऑनर टू प्रेजेंट टू यू द कैंडिडेट्स ट्वेल्व हु आर प्रेजेंट एंड फोर्टी नाइन इन एबसेंशिया टू हुम आई नो टू बी स्विटेबल एज मच बाई कैरेक्टर एज बाई लर्निंग and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of master of technology in cyber security and pray that they may be awarded the degree of master of technology in cyber security by virtue of the authority vested in me by the act as the chairman of the academic council of niit university and in recognition of your being suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of master of technology in cyber security i confer upon you the degree of master of technology in cyber security and require you that in thought word and action you prove yourself worthy of it abhishek kumar अनुराग चौधरी अनुराग कुमार अरोड़ा श्वेता रेड्डी धनवाटे डी किशोर गणेश वी के कुरुला सब्रीश महेश शरण विघ्नेश शरण मोहम्मद सदाब खान शरद कुमार एम सी
शुभम घोष श्री अभिरामी के एस थैंक यू मैम आई रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर देवशीर सेन गुप्ता टू प्रेजेंट द कैंडिडेट्स फॉर द अवार्ड ऑफ द डिग्री ऑफ मास्टर ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इन ज्योग्राफिक इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम्स मैडम I have the honor to present to you the candidate in absentia to whom I know to be suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of master of technology in geographic information systems and pray that they may be awarded the degree of master of technology in geographic information systems by virtue of the authority vested in me by the act as the chairman of the academic council of niit university and in recognition of your being suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of master of technology in geographic information systems i confer upon you the degree of master of technology in geographic information systems and require you that in thought word and action you prove yourself worthy of it thank you ma'am may i request all the recipients of the degree of master of science integrated in computer science to rise from their seats i request professor devashish sen gupta to present the candidate for the award of the degree of master of science integrated in computer science madam I have the honor to present to you the candidates one who is present and four in absentia to whom I know to be suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of master of science integrated in computer science and pray that they may be awarded the degree of master of science integrated in computer science by virtue of the authority vested in me by the act as the chairman of the academic council of niit university and in recognition of your being suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of master of science integrated in computer science I confer upon you the degree of master of science integrated in computer science and require you that in thought word and action you pro prove yourself worthy of it Chaitanya Choudhury Thank you ma'am May I request all the recipients of the degree of Master of Business Administration Integrated to rise from their seats. May I now request Professor Abhishek Datta to present the candidates for the award of the degree of Master of Business Administration Integrated. Madam, I have the honor to present to you the candidates 14 who are present and 14 in absentia to whom I know to be suitable as my as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of master of business administration integrated and pray that they may be awarded the master the degree of master of business administration integrated by virtue of the authority vested in me by the act as the chairman of the academic council of niit university and in recognition of your being suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of master of business administration integrated 
I confer upon you the degree of Master of Business Administration Integrated and require you that in thought, word and action, you prove yourself worthy of it. Amisha Das. Ansh Goyal. <laughs> Avantika Kedia. Banavalikar Aditi Prasad <laughs> Bhonge Prajit Abhijit Bibin Savio <laughs> Bishnoi Anil Hapuram Chahana Mehra <laughs> Hariya Urvish Mahesh Meghna Banerjee <laughs> Raghav Dutt Pathak Ritvika Chaube <laughs> Ruchir Rajesh Bhutara Vaishali Jagwani Thank you ma'am May I request all the recipients of the degree of Master of Technology in Educational Technology to rise from their seats May I now request Professor Vijay Manke to present the candidates for the award of the degree of Master of Technology in Educational Technology. Madam, I have the honor to present to you the candidates, two who are present to whom I know to be suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of Master of Technology in Educational Technology and pray that they may be awarded the degree of Master of Technology in Educational Technology. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Act as the Chairman of the Academic Council of NIT University and in recognition of your being suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements 
for the award of the degree of Master of Technology in Educational Technology, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Technology in Educational Technology and require you that in thought, word and action, you prove yourself worthy of it. Divya C. Senan. Gulrup Kaur. Thank you, ma'am. May I request all the recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy to please rise from their seats. May I now request Professor Vijay Manke to present the candidates for the award of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Madam, I have the honor to present to you the candidates, five who are present and one in absentia, to whom I know to be suitable as much by character as by learning and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and pray that they may be awarded the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Act as the Chairman of the Academic Council of NIIT University and in recognition of your being suitable as much by character as by learning, and having successfully completed the necessary requirements for the award of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and require you that in thought, word and action, you prove yourself worthy of it. Arun Kumar. Charu Kapoor. <laughs> Jitendra Joshi. Rahul Shandilya. <laughs> Supratik Banerjee. ma'am let the oath be administered i would request all the degree recipients to please rise from their respective seats i would like to call upon dr charu kapoor to lead the oath I hereby pledge that I hereby pledge that I will constantly endeavor I will constantly endeavor to be honest and upright to be honest and upright in the discharge of my duties in the discharge of my duties I will uphold 
I will uphold the dignity of the individual, the of the individual and the integrity of the profession. And the integrity of the profession. I will utilize my knowledge and learning. I will utilize my knowledge and learning for the glory of for the glory of NIIT University NIIT University and for the service of the country and for the service of the country and mankind at large and mankind at large Thank you Dr Charu I would like to request Mr. Vijay Thadani, co-founder of NIIT University, to congratulate the graduates and formally introduce the chief guest. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Let me start by congratulating the graduating batch of NIIT University students. So give yourself a big hand. I can't believe it's the same somber faces that we are seeing this morning compared to the wild dancing which was happening last night. So a true example of versatility. So now you have joined the growing family of Newtons, graduated Newtons who are out there in the world. We are starting a new tradition this year of instead of calling you alumni Newtons, we'll be calling you Forever Newtons. <laughs> Alumni for gives an impression that, yes, you were here, you can come in, but you are no longer here. <laughs> forever means you are forever a part of this university and forever, this university would like to play a role in your life. And we have a fantastic example of this forever NITNs, or Newtons, I'm sorry, that is happening right in front of us. Six years ago, a mother came to drop her daughter, who became a forever Newton. And today that daughter, forever Newton, is come to cheer her mother, who got her PhD degree. <laughs> so now you are part of a community of 3,267 new, forever Newtons. If I look back at the last many years that you spent two to four years in the campus, with the campus. It has the attributes of a thrilling video game, whether you call it Minecraft or Game of Thrones, but that's how it has been. So for a minute, let me switch to your lingo of gamers. Many of you are gamers. So in gamer speak, you've just completed a boss level at the end of one phase of the game of life and are now gearing up to begin the next epic mission. You're not just any graduating class. You're a squad of Newtons who have leveled up through unprecedented global challenges. The last few years have been like navigating through a game with extra difficulty settings. You are perhaps the only batch who saw the pre-COVID times the during COVID times, the post-COVID euphoria, and the post-COVID depression. It's been a marathon of academic quests, and amid, amidst it all, you've learned to establish your own identity, stepping out of the safe zones of family and home. You face the challenges like true heroes. You smashed obstacles, that's what you do in video games, and showed off skills, character, courage, and unwavering conviction. Your cooperation game was strong. You formed alliances, some permanent, covered each other's backs, 
and threw out lifelines to all those in need. So in the grand RPG, in gamers' terms, role-playing game of life, you not only survived, you thrived. So congratulations <laughs> once again. Now we get ready for the next boss fight because with the skills, bonds, and the experience points, XPs, that you gained, you are destined for a legendary status. We are confident that in this process, you will embrace the grace, dignity, and confidence that's so rightfully your own. The world eagerly awaits the contributions you will make your talents, your ideas, and your drive will shape the world in ways we can only imagine just now. My advice to you is to be bold, dream big, and do everything with equal passion. Like you were bold, you dreamt big, and you were passionately involved in everything at the campus. But also remember to be compassionate, like you were, and you held the hands of all those who needed you, and true to yourself as you forge your unique paths. So we are extremely proud of what you have accomplished, and we'll be there to cheer for you at every stage as you rise to newer and greater heights with a lasting commitment to making the world a better place. To the parents now, a heartfelt gratitude and congratulations. The milestone we are celebrating today was actually caused by you to start with. It's primarily the result of the strong foundations you built, the values you inculcated, encouragement you provided, and the sleepless nights that you went through. Most of all, we are grateful to you for the trust you placed in NU by sharing your most precious possession with us. You gave us shy boys and girls, and we return to you today <laughs> smart, confident young men and women who are determined to change this world. Incidentally, and I never forget to remind myself to say this, incidentally, the mothers would be very happy to know that your Newtons, your wards, thoroughly enjoy all the healthy food, the ghia and the tori, that you could never get them to eat. And now for the moment, now the moment that we've been waiting for. I'm deeply honored to introduce someone who is an epitome of scholarship, a mathematician par excellence, a distinguished academic leader, a bold innovator, thinker, and policymaker, who is widely respected in the world of academia, research, and industry. These are some of the descriptions which he wears lightly on his shoulders. Ladies and gentlemen, I have great pleasure in introducing Professor Dinesh Singh to you. <laughs> Professor Dinesh Singh earned his BSc Maths Honours and MA Maths Honours from St. Stephen's College, followed by an MPhil in Maths from the University of Delhi and a PhD in Maths and a DIC from Imperial College, London. He holds numerous, you can continue. <laughs> he holds numerous honorary doctorates, some of them being awarded by University of Edinburgh, National Institute of Technology, Kurukshetra, University College, Cork, Ireland, and the University of Houston. He started his career as a lecturer at St. Stephen's College, University of Delhi, went on to head the Department of Mathematics at the University of Delhi, became director at University of Delhi South Campus, officiated briefly as pro-vice 
Chancellor before being appointed Vice Chancellor of Delhi University in October 2010. <clears throat> that was a very interesting period for University of Delhi because it was literally shaken up from the roots. He introduced far-reaching reforms during his tenure. He was instrumental in setting up the Cluster Innovation Center, an interdisciplinary, first of its kind research center, particularly promoting undergraduate research, something that NU is also very proud of. He also popularized the concept of innovation as credit. He is a distinguished fellow of Hackspace at Imperial College London an adjunct professor at the University of Houston and has also taught at the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, and Indian Statistical Institute. He currently serves as the chancellor at K.R. Mangalam University. He's a firm believer that institutions of higher learning must be connected to the needs, wants, and challenges that society is faced with. NIT University takes great pride that his thoughts have found a place in our core principles. And as Raji pointed out, he's been one of the architects who helped us configure this university's core principles. All of us fondly remember his memorable lectures at NU. The two, from the Indus civilization to Srinivasa Ramanujam, a history of Indian mathematics brilliant lecture. And the second one, which was even better than that, which was titled, God is the Greatest Mathematician. In 2014, Professor Dinesh Singh was conferred with one of our nation's highest civilian honors, the Padma Shri, by the President of India. Apart from being an academician of an exceptional order, his other interests include being an avid painter who has held a number of independent exhibitions of his paintings. He also writes short stories, is deeply interested in sports on one hand and in philosophy, literature and the life of Mahatma Gandhi on the other. So with his diverse interests, he truly lives a 28-hour day every day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have great pleasure in presenting to you Professor Dinesh Singh. Param Adarniya Rajji, Param Adarniya Vijayji, और मेरी सखी सहपाठिनी इस यात्रा में प्रोफेसर मांड के इस सभागृह में उपस्थित माननीय विरिष्ट वशिष्ट और विरिष्ट वरिष्ट और विशिष्ट अतिथिगण मैं आभारी हूं कि आज मुझे यहां मौका मिला है आई एम डीपली ऑनर्ड I heard Raji and then Vijayji say all those really pleasing to the ear words about me. I itna jaanta hu, you know, mere pita ji agar jeevit hote, he would have loved to hear all that. Par yakin sirf meri maa ko hota. माए ऐसी ही होती हैं, लेकिन मदर इन लॉज ऐसी नहीं होती हैं। और अगर मुझे पता होता कि विजय जी ये सब कहने वाले हैं, तो I would have brought my mother in law along. <laughs> but thank you very much, and I'm deeply honored. It's a matter of enormous satisfaction just to witness any institution grow from scratch and flower and flourish 
but it's an even greater measure in greater measure of joy and pride i have witnessed this institution literally from scratch i have played hardly any role in this except that whenever i have been summoned and that's the only word i use for someone whom i deeply admire when rajesh summons you you have to attend <laughs> and so i have been present here on occasions and each visit has strengthened this belief which is best exemplified by the memorable words of mohammad iqbal ki kuch baat hai ki hasti mitti nahi jahan se there is something in this nation these are the things that keep india alive these are the things that keep india going these are the things that make india vibrant there was no reason to set up this university and iit was doing so well it had earned so much fame so much fortune brought glory to india so on and so forth but there was a reason that prompted rajji and vijay ji to take up this enterprise and they have devoted so much time i mean rajji literally <coughs> eats sleeps and drinks this university every time i converse with him he is bubbling with ideas on how to take it to the next level and there was no need but why did this happen why did he do that because like all enlightened and responsible citizens of society he realizes he has a debt to discharge to society and that's the message i want those who are being honored today with their degrees to imbibe you know education is a lifelong process believe me it's a lifelong process and what is education if you imbibe that it would help you be better in life and you should try and think about it because this institution has given you the right foundations and the right start keep that in mind keep in mind the fact that you will be indebted for life to this institution in so many ways and i suppose when you are about to enter the portals of the real world outside this campus it might be a good idea to try and recognize some markers some pathways some inspirational role models to see how best you could chart your way in life and i'm largely addressing you the rest here are far better at these things than i have been and you don't really need to pay attention to that it's just the youngsters here just remember this that the true meaning of education is to be able to understand the self this is something that you need to think about you have to delve within each one of us is born with a drum beat i call it the drum beat of the soul antaratma ki dhvani hai main isko antar dhvani kehta hu and the sole purpose of education is for you to try and recognize this drum beat and once you recognize the drum beat then you must march in the real world in harmony with the drum beat in step with the drum beat and when you do that do not worry about how the other person marches usse tulna mat kijiye apni he will march to his drum beat and he may not be in step with you it's important that you have the courage of your conviction to be in step with your drum beat and i am a mathematician and nothing in mathematics is explained better than through examples so let me give you some examples you know mahatma gandhi discovered the drum beat of his soul at a very young age very very young age i think he was 7 or 8 years of age 
And there is much learning in this, which I'm about to narrate. He discovered the drumbeat of his soul through an external stimulus. He went to witness the play Satyavadi Raja Harish Chandra. And Gandhi was absolutely captivated by the character of Harish Chandra. He records in his own words that he came back and that very night he takes a pledge that for the rest of his life he will adhere to the truth. That was the drumbeat of his soul. And that came at such an early age. He was lucky. That's why he became Gandhiji. If you look at Gandhi's life from that point onwards, it's a constant endeavor, a constant struggle to be faithful to that drumbeat that you need to adhere to the truth. His whole life is nothing but recognizing the truth and being sincere. Every single action is determined by that. And how did that happen? He saw the play. It moved him. It was an external stimulus that stirred his inner feelings and he delved within and recognized himself. Atma Gyan kehte isko. A kind of revelation. Gandhiji was Gandhiji. He was fortunate. Many of us tend to wait for that moment. The important thing is to be constantly endeavoring to find it. All these things that have happened to you, your collective experiences in this institution and otherwise should only be directed at that. And then you will realize that when I call this education, I haven't said that this is connected to any degree or formal recognition. It isn't. This is a degree that your soul will award to you. And who will be the arbiter that you deserve it? Your conscience. No one else. So remember this. As Shakespeare said. To thine own self be true. This above all else. To thine own self be true. And it shall follow. As the day follows the night. That you will never be false to any man. That is what your conscience will tell you. Remember that. Don't worry too much. It's great to be given a degree. It's great to be honored by the external world. But unless your con conscience accepts it, it's not worthwhile. It is your conscience that is a sole arbiter of what you deserve. And your conscience will ask you, have you been true to the drumbeat of your soul? So adhere to that. Adhere to it as the great ones have done in the past. And they have done it in many ways. You come from a great land, a great culture. All lands and all cultures are great. But we are familiar with that which resides in our genes, in our DNA. And let us take advantage of that. You belong to a tradition that accepts good ideas. From everywhere. One of the opening stanzas of the Rig Ved says. Ano bhadra kritabo yantu vishvata. Let noble thoughts come to us from every direction. Accept that. Be open. That is what will stir your soul. And how? Let's take the example of Srinivas Ramanujan. For me personally he is a god. And he found the drumbeat of his soul like Gandhiji at a very young age. Adhered to mathematics no matter what the cost. Just as Gandhiji adhered to the truth no matter what the cost. That is called complete bhakti. Complete puja. Complete ibadat. Do you think Ramanujan had no difficulties? There were times when he couldn't get food to eat. There were times when he had no idea where he would do anything to just feed himself and later even his wife. But not for a moment does Ramanujan say, I will give up mathematics. He adheres to mathematics. You know, Kabir expresses this so, so eloquently. Sahib mera ek hai, duja kaha na jahe. Duja sahib jo kahun, sahib khada rasa hai. You have to accept that drumbeat is your master. That's your God. That's your religion. That will take you to salvation. And that's what happened to Ramanujit. He's immortal. 
that is salvation ramanujan didn't seek immortality he was just a true worshipper of the drum beat of his soul he didn't care whether people will remember him he never asked anyone ki kya mujhe log yaad karenge no he was just being true to the drum beat of his soul and remember this that in this journey of yours if you are fortunate enough to recognize this at some stage and i believe most of you are well on your way to recognizing it if you haven't already then you will also recognize how indebted you are to so many things in society so many things in the world around you learn to discharge your debts this country this society these are the true parents the true mothers and fathers that have nurtured you and that <coughs> includes your biological parents and your teachers aur ye aisa rin hai chukaye nahi chukta hai but aapko ahuti deni padegi you will have to try and discharge this debt as best as you can how did gandhi ji do that Gandhi ji was such a successful lawyer in South Africa I have no idea whether you paid attention to his life in that detail He was making immense sums of money by pure and honest means remember this lesson because he was true to his rambit he was truthful every time a client came to him for a legal matter the first thing Gandhi ji did would ask the person if he was being truthful and gandhi would try and test the person and if he was convinced he was being truthful guess what he would do he would never advise the man to go to court he would say let's go talk to the other party let's see if we can resolve this you know they say honesty is the best policy that's what gandhi ji did he adhered to honesty even as a policy though it was his soul so he was being sincere about it and did you know that his practice flourished people flocked to him because they knew that he will steer them to the right path in the right way and he made huge sums of money not once did he think that he will use it for personal gain he was forever helping segments of society forever helping people who had to struggle forever taking up causes and eventually he takes a pledge and he gives up all his wealth he takes a vow of poverty and he imposes it on his wife and children it requires enormous courage but then that is true worship of your religion what was his religion adherence to truth ramanujan does that in the same way all the great ones do that remember this all the great ones do that what does ramanujan do his whole life before he goes to england is a matter of struggle as i said even to feed himself a square meal used to be occasionally a struggle but then when he is recognized by the world as being an outstanding mathematician one of the greats of all times then wealth comes to him recognition and wealth but then he falls ill and he comes back to india knowing that he is going to die i have read an account of his life that his wife wrote in ramanujan's birth centenary year in tamil i had it translated and she writes that he was a great astrologer I'm not saying you should or should not practice astrology I'm just narrating a story to show you the greatness of Ramanuja and he told his mother and wife that a little more than a year from that date he will die and he predicted the date of his death he said it is in my chart so here is a man who knows and accepts that he's going to die he is seriously ill and at that time he is world famous and the british government sanctions a handsome salary for him now ramanujan's entire family is dependent on him his father mother brother wife all are dependent on shrinivas ramanujan's income and what does this ramanujan do he writes to the british government that this money may be used for talented and needy students that is how you try and discharge your debt to society this great son of mother india did that 
Remember this, I'm not asking you to give up your life or do that, but be conscious that forever you will be indebted, no matter how often you try and discharge your debt. Remember the great ones before you, remember this land, remember how things have happened. And remember this, that which you imbibe with sincerity, honesty, discipline is what will help you find the drumbeat and then take you forward in life. If you have read the Mahabharat, then when Arjun takes this pledge to kill Jayadrat in battle, Jayadrat gets terribly, terribly disturbed. He goes straight that night before the battle to his guru, Drona. And he says, tell me honestly, you have taught Arjun and me both. Who will prevail tomorrow? And Drona says, I have been fair and honest in the way I taught you and I taught Arjun. But tomorrow Arjun will prevail simply because of the following reasons. Arjun has superior discipline. And that has huge and deep connotations. This business of superior discipline. Discipline in the way you conduct yourself in life. Discipline in the way you think. Discipline in the way you adhere to that which you believe. So he says Arjun will prevail for two reasons. He has superior discipline. And because he is on the side of dharm. And dharm is not in the sense of religion. Dharm is that. The Sanskrit word dharm means that which binds you, jo bandhta hai, usko dharma kehte hai. Arjun is sincere in his dharm and Drone predicts Arjun will prevail and that is exactly what happens. Arjun prevails. Remember these lessons. So be sincere in your belief and maintain that discipline. Discipline of the right conduct, the right thoughts, the right actions. And this complete adherence to whatever you believe in. And that will help you to get on in life. I have no idea what is your measure of success. I have no idea. But you know what we generally call success, fame, money, position, fortune. All those things are a corollary to that which you will do when you adhere to your true faith. Everything else will follow. And here are some simple, simple examples. Remember this. Draw lessons from the lives of the great ones. And wherever I have looked, wherever, I have greatly admired people and I realized many of them have had no formal education. Kabir, marvelous thinker, reformer, saint, high intellect. Most scholarly works on Kabir that I have read say that he was probably illiterate. He didn't know how to write. But look at his compositions. Look at his sincerity. The emperor questions Kabir. Does Kabir waver? No. He is firm in his belief and the emperor then lets him be. What about Michael Faraday? He did not study even beyond the second grade. He was taken out of school for various reasons, came from an extremely poor family. He gets apprenticed at the age of 12 or 13 to a bookbinder. And he could have given up in life. He doesn't. He takes up the job of this apprenticeship with sincerity. He is adept at binding books that come to that shop. And when you are adept, you have to align the pages. You have to do a good job. And he had natural curiosity. So he began to look at what's in those pages. And then he realized the drumbeat of his soul told him that adhere to the science pages. And he began to teach himself through the books that came to be bound, which were related to science. And that is how he becomes a man who didn't cross the second grade of school becomes the greatest scientist of his age and one of the greatest of all ages, Michael Faraday. Always, always remember this in the words of W.B.H., the great British poet. Draw a balance between the moral, the sensory and the intellectual. By sensory, I mean real world experiences. Hathoka Prayog. You look at anybody's life, 
whether it's Hazrat Paigambar, whether it's Isa Masih, whether it's Mahatma Gandhi, whether it's Guru Nanak, all of them were adept with their hands. Remember this, Christ, the son of God, was apprenticed to his father for carpentry. He was good at that. Hazrat Paigambar, he was a shepherd, a herdsman. He was good at that. Guru Nanak would not take on a disciple until that disciple would use his hands in the agricultural fields with Guru Nanak who would always be there. Mahatma Gandhi was so good with his hands in so many ways. Just spinning the wheel, generating enough cloth for himself. He said that is a form of prayer, a form of meditation. I would urge Raji to make Charkha spinning mandatory in your university. I have tried these experiments at Delhi University with fabulous results. I would say if you can put it in the curriculum, it brings about, Gandhi used to say that and I never understood this. I remember when Moraji Desai was Prime Minister, I was a student at Delhi University. He was for some reason fond of me. And occasionally he would just send for me as Prime Minister. I would sit and talk to him. He would spin the Charkha. And I would make fun. He allowed me to poke fun at him. He's an 80 year old man, the Prime Minister of India. Look at his humility. And I said, why do you do this? Gandhi just used it as a kind of symbol for freedom. He didn't once argue with me. All he said was, he smiled and he said, Khud karoge tab samjhoge. In my darkest hours at the University of Delhi, as Vice Chancellor, I had a spinning wheel in my inner office. And I would go there and spin for half an hour. And I would come out stronger, better, more optimistic, better able to handle the challenges. So I instituted this for all students in an optional fashion. I wasn't sure how they will receive this otherwise. I was surprised that so many came forward and I had their experiences recorded. Two months of spinning, the Charkha, this topper of BCom honors of the University of Delhi tells me that I was a lost soul. All these three years I topped the university, but I was a lost soul. I have now discovered myself. And if you think that was one example, I met this girl who said, sir, I was suffering from severe depression. No medication, no psychiatric counseling was helping me. Three months of the charkha and I'm out of my depression. Try it. Believe me, try it. I'm saying the I met this boy <laughs> who had migraine. Again, perennial, perpetual, chronic sufferer from migraine. He told me that it has disappeared. And Gandhiji always said that. And Muraji just smiled and said, Jabta khud nahi karoge, nahi malum padega. Let them and magical ideas will come to you. You will do better in life no matter what you define as better. Learn from these examples. Learn from all the great ones. Take up whoever's life you want. Look at Sachin Tendulkar. What do you think? He has no degree beyond the 12th grade. I don't know if he's cleared the 12th. I think he's cleared the 12th. But look. When he was about 7 or 10 years of age, that's when he discovered cricket. He was more interested in tennis before that. And he discovered cricket. <coughs> and it began to resonate with him. And you know, his life was tough. He came from a very ordinary family. As the story goes, apparently he didn't even have more than one trouser to go to school and use that for cricket practice. So he would come back from school, his mother would wash it. He would wear it even when it wasn't fully dry and go off for cricket practice. And he practiced cricket, practiced batting day in, day out. This is prayer. He practiced this day after day, year after year. That's called being true to the drumbeat of your soul. Did he ask himself, Ki mujhe isse paise milega? Never. Did he ask himself, Ki mujhe Bharat Ratna milega? Never. He was just happy being a batsman. Everything else just follows. Yogi hamari parampara mein kaha jata hai. That when a yogi evolves, ye siddhyan, they descend upon him. But a true yogi rises above that. Look at the humility with which he conducts himself. I have never seen him utter an incorrect word. 
क्या कहा था द्रोण ने सुपीरियर डिसिप्लिन इन हिस्स कंडक्ट बिग वर्दी ऑफ दैट लर्न फ्रॉम देम नन ऑफ देम सीम टू हैव एनी फेमस गांधी जी के पास भी कोई यूनिवर्सिटी की डिग्री नहीं थी लोग कहते हैं लॉ की डिग्री थी इट वॉज एंट डिग्री he qualified to practice law in a formal proper way make no mistake but it's not a university degree but he became father of the nation because he was gandhi who adhered to his true values that is what i want to tell you today i'm not here to sermonize again and again i'm just passing on these things as pearls of wisdom genuine wisdom that have been given to me and others by the great ones I am not great, but I am at least able to pass them on to you because I know these things are great. And remember this: you have been fortunate to be in this institution. You have been fortunate to be in this country. Take pride in that. India is one amongst four or five nations that has the capability to put a man on the moon and on Mars. Just think about it. in these hundreds of nations that are there on this planet india is just one of those four or five that can do that kahan se kahan hum aaye hain when i was a child there was such scarcity all our grain was imported from the us we were forever borrowing we were forever in debt there was disease there was smallpox there was cholera infants used to die of typhoid cholera diphtheria god knows what all there was hardly any milk production india now exports milk it is one of the largest producers of milk in the world be thankful that you are in such a country that as iqbal says ki kuch baat hai ki hasti mitti nahi jahan se hum aage hi badhte jayenge tum kuch karo na karo whether you make an effort the country will march anadi kal se aa rahi hai isko main mahayagya kehta hu bharat ki yatra ko और अनंत काल तक रहेगी पर तुम न चूक जाना उस ऋण को चो इस यात्रा में इस महायज्ञ में आहुति देना जैसे भगत सिंह ने दिया जैसे रामानुजन ने दिया जैसे गांधी ने दिया तुम भी अपना रास्ता ढूंढो और उसको मानो कि ऋण चुकाना है आहुति का रास्ता है भला ही भला होगा बस यही कहना चाहता था बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद जय हिंद Thank you sir for your inspiring words and I must say it is always a treat listening to you. May I now request the honorable chief guest Professor Dinesh Singh to award the Dr Karan Singh gold medal to the position holders. Aditya Chaudhary for standing first in Bachelor of Technology batch 2019-23. There's a tie between Abhishek Verma, Aparna Rohatgi, Shreyas Raj Biswal for standing first in Master of Technology in Cyber Security batch 21-23 in Epsentia. Chaitanya Chaudhary for standing first in Master of Science Integrated in Computer Science batch 2019-23. Banavlikar Aditi Prasad for standing first in Master of Business Administration Integrated 2019-23 I request honorable chief guest Professor Dinesh Singh to present the Ram Rajendra Malhotra medal 2023 which is awarded to the best all-round student amongst the undergraduate graduating class this year the award is being conferred upon Bishnoi Anil Hapuram 
from Master of Business Administration Integrated, Batch 2019 -23. Thank you, sir, for doing the honors. I request our founder, Mr. R.S. Pawar, to present a memento to the chief guest, Professor Dinesh Singh. May I now request Professor Parimal Mandke, President of NIIT University, to present the word of thanks. Honorable Chief Guest Professor Dinesh Singh, Mr. Pawar, Founder NIIT University, Mr. Thadani, Co-Founder NIIT University, Mr. Rajendran and Mr. Thakur, members, of the Board of Management, graduating Newtons, their parents, esteemed guests, Newtons, members of leadership, faculty colleagues, and staff. I am truly honored to share the dias today with Professor Dinesh Singh and the founders, and feeling truly privileged as I conferred degrees, a most sacred ritual for a university. A ceremony like this cannot be concluded without acknowledging one and all who contributed to its success. Once again, I have the honor of giving a vote of thanks. First and foremost, I would like to congratulate all my dear graduating Newtons it is a moment of great pride and joy for all of us to celebrate this momentous occasion, a culmination of years of your hard work, learning and growing. This day also marks a new and exciting phase ahead for all of you and I am sure you shall embrace this new chapter with great confidence and conviction. On behalf of NIIT University, I would like to extend a heartfelt thank to our esteemed Chief Guest Professor Dinesh Singh, who has graciously infused righteous values, inspiring virtues and wisdom through his words. A one line, a very strong message to all of you and to all of us as well. Uh, find the drumbeat of your soul. I think in very few words, the message is so strong. And I will urge all my forever Newtons here to remember this message throughout your life. Do not lose, get busy, living humdrum life and chasing rainbows, but find, discover the drumbeat of your soul very beautifully, powerfully put across. You have positively motivated not only the graduates, but each person present here. I'm also very thankful to our founders, Mr. Rajendra Pawar, Mr. Vijay Thadani, for their unwavering commitment to excellence and conducive learning perennial counsel and support. Our gratitude to Neeti Pawar for her continued support to our organizing team. Heartfelt thanks to Renu Thadani and Sudha Raju for their silent backstage contribution to the campus wellness. An event of this dimension cannot happen overnight. The wheels start rolling months in advance. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of highly motivated and dedicated nurturers and Newtons. 
I wish to express my gratitude for your dedication and enthusiastic participation in making this event a great success. I am deeply thankful to my colleagues in the office of the Registrar, Academic Office, IT team, Library, HR, Finance, and last but not the least, members of administration team and all other staff who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes. I am deeply thankful to them. From initiating the planning to ensuring the smooth conduct of each event at the university, your sweat and labor is immense. I wish to take this moment to acknowledge the parents, families and friends who have given their unflinching support, guidance and unbridled love to graduating Newtons. And finally, my heartiest congratulations and thank you to all graduating Newtons. In the times to come, you will fly the NU flag high and make us all proud. As you stand on the threshold of a very exciting phase, I sincerely hope that you are filled with endearing memories of your life at NU and you will leave an indelible mark on society and world at large. Once again, my sincere gratitude to everyone present here. Thank you for making the 13th convocation truly memorable. Good afternoon and have a great day. Thank you, ma'am. May I now request our Honorable President, Prof. Parimal Manke, to declare the convocation to be closed. I declare the convocation closed. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> to conclude, I wish all of you a very harmonious and happy life ahead. May the future hold endless opportunities and may you make your mark on the world. May I now request all of you to please rise for the national anthem. Thank you. Thank you all for gracing the occasion and blessing our graduates.